If someone told Suna just a week ago that today would be one of the most action-packed days in his life, he would probably laugh. For him, there were two kinds of days in his adult life. Difficult days and resting days. Difficult days were full of action and work, being in days of matches and practices and all that. They were exhausting and sometimes not as satisfying as he wished. But he didn't complain about those days, at least not often. After all, it was his decision to go pro and he couldn't leave his teammate do all the work for him. That wouldn't do. But he still preferred the resting days, welcoming them with open arms, especially after a hard practice or difficult match. He could sleep as long as he wanted and the only things he had to do was to take a shower at some point and take a short walk into the kitchen the moment he could smell the nice scent of food being prepared when Osamu started cooking for them. And this day was supposed to be a resting day. But it wasn't. Because the EJP coach decided to throw a few extra practices at them because of the upcoming new season. To say Suna wasn't exactly delighted would be an understatement. But he had to comply, and so he spent the whole morning and afternoon in the gymnasium before coming back home feeling like someone sucked all energy from him. Maybe he should check if one of his teammates wasn't an energy vampire. He wouldn't put it past Komori. That guy had a suspiciously lot of energy. The only thing he managed to do after getting home and throwing a quick greeting at Osamu, because he was never too tired to not greet his boyfriend, was to fall face first on the bed with a muffled groan. He didn't even get to change from his clothes before he drifted off into a deep slumber. He was just having a beautiful dream about Osamu opening a new branch of his onigirimiya, and he was there clapping during the grand opening like the supportive boyfriend he was when Osamu from reality had to ruin it by waking him up. Rin? Come on, you have to at least change and eat something before you go to sleep. Suna groaned and attempted to throw a scorching glare at him. Judging by Osamu's unchanging, stupidly soft expression, he wasn't successful. I'm too tired for that. Can you undress me? It was an instinctive response, though he certainly wouldn't mind a bit of help with getting out of his clothes. After all, Osamu seemed full of energy and surely would make the private while worth it. Osamu smiled and ran his fingers through Suna's hair. You know, I would love to, but you wouldn't have energy for that anyway and someone has to make dinner. Suna whined, changing his expression from angry, or supposed to be angry, to pleading puppy eyes. Please, I'm dead. I can't move anymore today. Surprisingly enough, it wasn't a lie. He left his all in the practice and now only the image of having to get up and move seemed almost impossible. He could already feel himself drifting back into sleep. He forced his eyes to stay open only by his sheer willpower to stay awake for long enough to get a dinner. Osamu chuckled and tickled his side a bit. Come on, you'll take a shower and everything will be better, you'll see. Do you want anything in particular? Suna hummed and shrugged, rubbing the tiredness from his eyes, his mind supplying him with all the beautiful images of Osamu's cooking. He started salivating just thinking about the food. I'll eat anything you give me. I don't have strength to be picky. Osamu chuckled. Okay, but in that case, I don't want to hear any grumbling later. Sure, sure. Of course he wasn't going to complain. This was Osamu's cooking they were talking about. There was not even a tiny chance it was going to taste bad, unless he was experimenting or cooking something for the first time. Osamu kissed his forehead and got up heading out of the bedroom. Suna flopped back on the bed, this time facing the ceiling and starting his waking up ritual. His body needed time to adapt to consciousness. He wasn't sure how long after that it was, but suddenly he heard Osamu's pained cry from downstairs. In! 
He jumped out of the bed, surprised by the speed of his reaction himself, and ran to the stairs, stopping at the mezzanine. What happened? Please come here. Quick! The frantic calling made his legs move automatically, and not even two seconds later, he stood in the kitchen. What happened? He froze, noticing the amount of blood on the counter and on Osamu's hand. It wasn't unusual for Osamu to hurt himself from time to time. He was a cook after all, working with knives. But Suda had never seen so much blood from a simple cut. Samu, what did you... I wasn't looking and the knife slid. Suna's brain short-circuited. And what... how... what do you need? Do I call an ambulance or... Bring me the first aid, quickly. First aid, yeah, yeah, going. He sprinted back upstairs before realizing he couldn't remember where to go. He cursed his sleepy brain and leaned over the railings. Where do we have the first aid? In the bathroom. Hurry up. Please. Yeah, right. He opened every single cabinet they had, digging around the contents of them in search for the small red box. Come on, where is it? I'm sure I've seen it somewhere around here. Ah, huh, have it. Hold on, I'm coming. He grabbed the box and ran back to stairs, rushing to be down as soon as possible. If the wound was bleeding so much, every second was important. Rin! I'm coming, I'm coming. He was just running over the mezzanine when his foot got caught in the carpet they had there. He didn't even manage to yelp when he collided head first with the window, and then he was just falling. Second later, he was swallowed by darkness. Osamu POV Osamu rushed outside, his heart pounding wildly against his ribs, horror squeezing his chest. He didn't want to see what the fall did to Suna, but he had to get out there and help him. His heart almost stopped when he spotted the crumbled, softly whimpering form on the ground covered in blood and glass shards, some of them still pierced through Suna's skin. Rin! Suna's fingers twitched slightly, a quiet, pained groan leaving his lips. Osamu rushed to his side, his own hands shaking and hovering uncertainly above Suna's body, unsure what to do first. There were deep cuts all over Suna's face and arms, and Osamu, to his horror, could now see even more shards being stuck deep into his flesh. His eyes were open, but glossed over and unfocused, telling Osamu there might be something wrong with Suna's head too. Hold on, please, stay awake, okay? He could hear Suna's breath gurgling in his throat, and one look at his abdomen told him why. There was a large glass shard stuck in his stomach, the wound bleeding profusely. Osamu's breath hitched. Oh god. Suna opened his mouth as if trying to say something, but no words left his lips, only another gurgle and hissed breath. Osamu gently squeezed his forearm while he dialed the emergency number with his free hand. Hold on, please. I'll call you help, I promise. Just hold on. Come on, come on, pick up already. What's your emergency? Please send someone to the address. My my partner, he fell through the window and is bleeding and needs help. He has glass everywhere and blood. Alright, please calm down. The ambulance is on the way. Is he conscious? Osamu quickly checked Suna's eyes, which were fortunately still looking back at him, though he could tell the tiredness was overcoming him fast. Yes, but might not be for long. Please hurry, I can't lose him. You have to help him, please. The ambulance will be there soon, I promise. Try to keep your partner conscious until they arrive, okay? Talk at him and keep an eye on his breathing. Okay. Okay. He squeezed Suna's forearm again, 
careful not to accidentally hurt him even more in case there were some tiny pieces of glass he didn't see. Zuna's breathing was shallow, but at least he was still somewhat responding to Osamu's talking and reassurances. It will be fine, Rin, I promise. I will get you help. Just hold on. For me, okay? Don't close your eyes. Please. Zuna took a deeper breath, but coughed, blood coloring his teeth and lips. Osamu panicked. He's going to choke on his own blood. What do I do? How high was the fall? Three meters? Not more. Alright, carefully roll him over on his side so the blood can flow out of his mouth. Osamu did what the operator told him, minding the large shard stuck in Suna's stomach. Suna whimpered when he moved him, and Osamu's chest constricted. I'm sorry, dear. I'm so sorry. But it will help you, I promise. Suna coughed again, more blood spilling from his mouth. Osamu's heart shattered seeing the excruciating pain clear in Suna's face. He clenched his teeth, swallowing back the tears threatening to spill from his eyes. There was no time for that now. He had to keep his boyfriend conscious, or he would never forgive himself. But he still wanted to cry when he finally heard the sirens approaching. It's going to be fine. Everything is going to be fine again. He paced around the waiting room, feeling like a cat on the hot roof. Zuna was admitted for surgery immediately after they arrived in the hospital about four hours ago, and no one wanted to tell him if he was alright and how long that surgery would take. He noticed one of the nurses was occasionally throwing weird looks in his direction, but he didn't have the mental capacity to care at that moment. He had to know if Rin was alright. Nothing else mattered. Please be okay, please be okay. He startled when someone tapped his shoulder. He expected it to be a doctor or another nurse that would finally tell him if his boyfriend was going to be fine, but paused when his gaze fell on the police badge on the man's chest. Meosamu? Yes. What's wrong? We got a call about what happened to your partner as a suspicious event that could show some sort of domestic violence or attempted murder. Osamu froze. What? I'm sorry, but I have to ask you to answer a few questions. But we... It was an accident. He ran down the stairs and probably stumbled over something. I, I know I shouldn't have rushed him, but I've never hurt him, I swear. He's my boyfriend. Why would I hurt him? I just... I just want to know if he's okay. Why doesn't anyone want to tell me if he's okay? The panic squeezed his chest, making it hard to breathe. How could anyone think he would hurt Rin? He loved him more than anything. Why would he hurt him? The policeman took him by his shoulders and carefully set him down on the nearest chair, squatting down to his eye level. I'm terribly sorry. I know now is not the best time, but we have to deal with reports like this no matter how crazy it might sound. Will you be able to tell me how it all happened? As detailed as possible, please, so we can avoid any possible misunderstandings later. Osamu shakily recalled the whole event. He told the policeman everything from the prank to how tired Suna was and how unfortunately placed the window on the stairs is. The man wrote everything down, patiently steering Osamu back to the topic when he slid back into panic about Suna's injury. I swear I would never hurt him. I know it's my fault for rushing him, but I would never do anything to him. You have to believe me. The man patted his shoulder, giving him a soft, encouraging smile. I do believe you, but in return you have to understand this is a necessity when we get a report like this. It's nothing against you. Heck, I know your partner from the matches. I'm actually his big fan. We watch every EGP match. He doesn't look like someone who would let himself be pushed around if this really was domestic abuse. But either way, my colleague will come in shortly to ask about it your partner too, 
so we could be 100% sure. Osamo took a shaky breath and slumped deeper into the chair. I understand. Will I be able to see him before in the interrogation? I'm afraid I'm afraid we will have to stay here until after the questioning. To avoid any protests about you influencing the questioned person. Osamu wanted to cry. Not only no one wanted to tell him if his own boyfriend was alright, but he also had to wait until Suna got questioned if Osamu was abusive or tried to kill him. Alright. They waited in front of the rooms for another hour or so. Osamu was still shaking, but surprisingly enough, the other man's presence somewhat calmed him down. At least a bit. The man was kind and talked his panic away with stories from his work, taking Osamu's mind off the subject at hand. He even convinced the doctor to tell Osamu how Suna was doing. According to him, Suna lost quite a lot of blood, but thanks to the shard it wasn't any life-threatening amount. He was also already awake, which was a good sign, and apparently asking for Osamu. The policeman nodded and upon seeing Osamu's unrest, called over his partner to finish the investigation. He himself stayed by Osamu's side outside of the room. It didn't take long before they heard raised voice from the room and Osamu had to smile, recognizing Suna's sharp voice. He couldn't understand what Suna was saying, but he was happy his boyfriend was feeling well enough to go on a tirade. The door opened and the other policeman walked out, looking slightly shocked and confused. Um, are you Samu? Osamu perked up. Yes. Your partner is... he's asking for you. Quite relentlessly, might I say. Osamu looked at the man next to him uncertainly. Can I? You said I have to wait until... Let Samu in. Now. Please come inside. I think I have what I need. Just go inside and calm him down, please. The older policeman smiled and got up, waving the younger man off and motioned for Osamu to walk into the room. Seems like we don't have a choice. Osamu rushed inside and paused. Suna looked good for being after surgery and blood loss, yet Osamu's heart still clenched when he saw all the bandages on his arms and head. Osamu? He shook off the stupor and headed to the bed to carefully wrap Suna in his arms. I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Your hand? Yeah, it was just a prank. I'm so sorry, Rin. I didn't want this, I swear. Ash, I know you didn't. It's not your fault. I'm glad they finally allowed you to come here. That nurse was so annoying, blabbering about how I don't have to be afraid to speak up to the police if you abuse me or something. I think I will have a word with the doctor here. She was just worried, Rin. That could save someone from a real abuser, you know? Suna huffed, but nuzzled his nose into Osamu's hair. I see everything is fine here. Osamu pulled away a bit, his cheeks heating up. Suna narrowed his eyes at the other man. If you are here to accuse Samu of abusing me again, I'm gonna get up and kick your ass. Um, Rin, do you think it's a good idea to threaten a police officer? But the older man just chuckled. No worries. At least we can close this on a good note. There might be someone contacting you about this, but I think it will be fine. Good, because otherwise I would totally get up. Osamu gently smacked his shoulder. Be nice to your fan, who also took care of me the whole time I couldn't go inside. Oh? The man scratched the back of his head. Yeah, um, I know this isn't entirely appropriate, but could I ask for an autograph? The guys on the station would burst with envy. Suna snorted. Sure, for taking care of Samu. 
They were soon left alone after the policeman bid them farewell with a happy smile on his lips, hiding the autograph paper in his pocket. Nice guy, right? Osamu huffed a short laugh. Yeah. I guess we got lucky, otherwise I could have been handcuffed and on right to prison. He became serious again. I'm sorry, Ren. For the prank. Suna sighed, but reached out to take Osamu closer to him. Well, I guess it could have been worse. But you really scared me. I thought you are bleeding so much for real. I'm sorry. I'll forgive you if you never do something like this again. Ever. Promise me. Osamu smiled and leaned in for a kiss. I promise. 